Hello again, everyone. Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here at the very beginning of October to give you another update on uh, softwood lumber prices. And then um, I'll be doing some more videos uh, quickly right after this um, for the most popular um, lumber production and rail car loadings in Canada, US, and the uh, latest data on US housing starts, and then the uh, new home sales and uh, new home prices as I've been doing um, every month for the past uh, since the spring. So uh, that's right, lumber prices are down. Uh, this is not surprising or alarming at all. As I was saying all through the summer, those very high lumber prices that we had in the spring, that record-breaking level of uh, US $1,600 per thousand board feet on the benchmark Western Spruce Pine Fir 2x4. Um, and remember that I was telling you at that time, yes, the price was, you know, unbelievable historical high, but the sales volumes were not that high. Uh, it was a situation where the uh, few people who uh, absolutely needed to buy wood right at the time for projects that they had could not wait and so were paying that price but the um, total sales volumes were down quite a bit as everyone else was waiting um, to see uh, where prices would go as they returned to what we call normal levels and so that happened over the summer uh, the price not just of the uh, Western Spruce, but of course everything else dropped back down from that unsustainable high that we had in the spring until a little bit after Labor Day and then uh, started to recover back up. During the summer, the sales volumes were pretty good. And I think a lot of people saw the announcements out of some of the larger companies, especially here in British Columbia, but elsewhere as well, uh, having curtailments. Um, Two-week curtailments, one-week curtailments, 80% of production, uh, closing uh, maybe one mill uh, for an entire week. I think that was Conifex in McKenzie that did that uh, in the East as well. Some companies in Quebec and uh, other parts of North America announced curtailments, which is normal uh, for the season. And when... Um, uh, demand as strong as it has been. They need to take maintenance downtime. They need to give people vacation time and all these kind of things. It is not unusual uh, there before Labor Day uh, during the hot uh, weeks in August for companies to curtail. And so now we have had that uh, people who've been watching my videos heard me say, you know, Labor Day really lets us know a few things. And uh, just uh, a week or two after Labor Day, um, the prices that had hit that um, sort of recovery back down um, started to rise again. And so let's look at the graph real quick. I really want to emphasize the trend of the prices uh, having recovered up just a little bit there during September this year compared to the uh, run-up in uh, the prices uh, for third quarter last year, which at that time had been a completely unknown astronomical high of just around $1,000. Uh, U.S. $1,000 per thousand board feet, again on that benchmark Western Spruce price. Uh, nobody could believe it. And... Um, so let's look at the graph to see the trend line at uh, the end of last year compared to what's happening right now. And maybe we'll see if we can get some kind of estimation of what we're going to see for the rest of the year. So the red line is 2019 and it looks completely flat because those prices didn't reach anywhere near where they have been the last couple of years. The blue line is this year, a huge uh, run up there in the spring as I've been saying down, down, down until just a couple of weeks ago, started to pop back up. And look how that mirrors the yellow line, which is last year. And last year was unprecedented for so many reasons. Now, are we entering into a new era where uh, lumber prices end strong in October, November, dip down and then start the next year high again? We'll wait and see. Okay, and so getting into the specifics, I'm talking about the top line there, Western Spruce, uh, 
The uh, current price is $510 US per thousand board feet, which is up $30 or 6% from one week ago when it was 480. It's up $63 or 14% from one month ago when it was 447. It's down $450 or 47% from one year ago when it was 960. And it's up $134 or 36% from two years ago when it was 376. If you remember what I've been saying, uh, we all know that lumber prices track closely to housing. U.S. housing is by far the largest consumer of North America softwood lumber. 2019 was not a good year for housing and lumber prices were low. Okay, uh, so uh, that 376 at the same time in mid-September of 2019 was not a good price. Uh, housing starts were not that good and at the same time the sales volumes of course were low because of the time of year and because uh, the demand was low. Uh, now during the past year and a half when those lumber prices just surprised everyone and people were making claims that they pretended that they knew what was going on in the market uh, and people who who normally didn't really pay much attention to lumber but just needed some wood for some reason were screaming that this is gouging, that this is um, collusion, that the government should get involved. Nonsense like that, sorry to say. Um, that's because for the past 10 years since the crash of U.S. housing in 2006 and the uh, macroeconomic uh, slowdown there in 2008, lumber prices were depressed because U.S. housing was down. The U.S. has been underbuilt for those 10 years between 2008 and uh, 2018. And this kept demand low and kept prices low. So everything that we're having now, we are not going to return to $250, $250 per thousand board feet ever again. Okay. Um, and I've said this before. And I will explain to you why. Because at $250, $250 per thousand board feet was a little bit above cost of production for those 10 years. There's been some real changes happening on the ground here, especially in British Columbia, um, with the lack of supply due to the mountain pine beetle. And now we've got all these forest fires uh, that's happening in other places. But, you know, I'm talking about BC right now. And uh, the change in the policy at the BC government um, for the stumpage, as we call it here in Canada, the um, price for the logs. Uh, one year ago, or in spring of 2020, the change in the policy was to um, peg the stumpage uh, based on the lumber price. This is a, an effort to satisfy the U.S. Softwood Lumber Coalition and to get um, a resolution to the softwood lumber duty. So when we have the prices of lumber that were so high, then in the three months following, the prices of logs are going to go up. Okay, so cost of production dynamic is changed and uh, it's not $200 a thousand anymore anywhere and this sort of 450 I'm going to be really sort of anecdotal there but um, the floor for sales price of lumber uh, of the benchmark Western Spruce is going to land somewhere around $450 per thousand board feet US because that's the cost of production okay so when we had in 2019 this price 376 in the middle of September when housing starts were not doing well and lumber sales were not doing well we're not going to see that price even if when the the housing market slows down and lumber sales slow down it's not going to go to 376 it's not going to go before below 400 it's probably not going to go below 450 so right now at the 510, that's a pretty good price. If the sawmills are paying attention, as I know they are, 
they're going to increase their sales and not worry so much about the price because that graph that I just showed you of how the prices for lumber increased so much from now until like November or whatever it was last year, if that can happen again with a um, sales price at, you know, 550, uh, that's going to look really good uh, for the financial reporting um, at year end for the sawmills. Okay. So here we have those five benchmark uh, dimension lumber prices and the one panel, your plywood. Uh, the <laughs> beginning of the graph from January 2019 to like May of 2020 looks completely flat again because the prices went so incredibly high and then come back down as you can see right toward the end of the graph line where we are right now ticking up uh, on almost everything which we would not normally expect in a normal building year and a normal seasonal cycle and so in the next few weeks we'll find out if that will last okay great so I think everyone understands a little bit more now than uh, at the beginning of this video and I'll explain some more details uh, that are really important to um, understand the market right now and see if we can figure out how it's going to go to the end of this year um, this unseasonal increase in, uh, like, historically, uh, prices of lumber and sales uh, of lumber, uh, I think, has a lot to do with what's happening with the climate. Okay, last year, you know, we can't use last year for anything, because obviously, like, all those changes of uh, in society and um, uh, the work, uh, the way that people work, but there's a similarity between this year and last year and that's the fires um boy you know we're gonna be in a real problem if this um if this wildfire situation continues uh further into further years because this year was unbelievably bad i mean last year was horrific and we lost a ridiculous amount of timber and um, this year it was worse in a different way. And plus we had like this heat dome thing. Uh, that's what they were calling it for us here in BC. Very unprecedented. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, I was just at um, this morning at a conference, the Forest Resources Association were holding their Western Region Conference. And uh, yesterday morning as well, and a fellow was speaking about um, his company and uh, the plan to plant seedlings since the fires of last year and, and of this year. So this fellow uh, who had some uh, forest land and sawmill in Oregon had, I think he said, 800000 or $800,000 worth and that the trees were each worth about a buck fifty. So whichever way you want to figure it out. Um, because of the uh, drought and the heat that we had, they all died. They all died. So they are working on um, having, again, unseasonal, having an autumn planting. Something that people really should understand is that lumber is a forward indicator uh, of what's going to happen, not just with housing starts, not just with uh, home sales, letting you know whether that's improving or going to start going softer, but Lumber is the one of the first things to let you know when there's a sort of a crisis or a situation. And I will speak to supply chain um, and transportation, which uh, was a huge problem for the forestry and for lumber all the way. I mean, it's always a problem, uh, but really um, halfway through last year, definitely in third quarter, which does explain the uh, price increases at that time. And absolutely in the spring, which explains that huge price increase. When I said earlier in this video that the customers who really needed the wood for whatever reason, they couldn't wait and were paying um, those high prices just for a few sticks really. One of the problems they were having was that the wood that they had previously ordered that they were expecting hadn't arrived and nobody knew where it was. It had left the sawmill, you know, six weeks earlier. It would have normally gone through the reload or uh, across the border or whatever it was doing and uh, would be arriving on site. So what 
some people had um, purchased weeks before or, or purchased to, to receive weeks before they hadn't got yet and they had to go back to the sawmill and order, order more wood, right? And so uh, these tiny volumes, uh, prices going up, um, was why it uh, that unsustainable 1600 in the spring. Now you're hearing everybody else is talking about transportation and that they can't get rail cars, they can't get trucks, they can't get drivers for the trucks. Okay, so for building, there's uh, a lack of all building material, not just lumber. Okay, so lumber, everybody was crying last year, they couldn't get wood, now they can get tiles, they can't get roofing, they can't get plumbing, they can't get countertops, and they can't get workers. So I don't know what that's going to mean for housing as demand stays high, but these important things like um, availability of lots um, is very tight. Uh, maybe it's going to be the same situation where the sales volumes are not that high, but the prices of homes continues to increase. We'll have to wait and see. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. That's kind of like the um, bigger picture idea of what's happening with uh, lumber and housing in general. Um, and the only thing that we're going to be able to know to understand where the market is at is as it happens to the end of this year. So I'll keep making these videos uh, over the coming months when normally lumber is not interesting and there's um, fewer and fewer business and, and prices are going down and people are uh, investing in their uh, logging and they're um, putting in maintenance at their mills and it's just getting really quiet usually for my business at, um, you know, definitely November and December. Um, so I'll come back and make more videos. Uh, if it does get quiet, I'll, I'll be shorter. <laughs> and uh, I've got some more coming up right now, so uh, stay tuned.